In the last video, I talked about the principle of uh, ordinary least squares where you try to minimize the sum of square residuals to fit a line. The whole purpose of uh, fitting a line was to estimate these beta parameters and these parameters show you the effect of one variable on another variable. In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of examples using R to get those beta parameters. But essentially, if you look under the hood, R will be using the same principle to estimate uh, these beta parameters. I'm going to start with the example 2.3 in your book. This example explores the relationship between uh, the firm's performance as measured by the rate of return on equity and the salaries of uh, CEOs. So essentially the point is what impact does the performance of a firm has on the compensation that it pays to its CEOs. We can write uh, a regression equation to estimate this relationship as salary equals beta 0 and remember beta 0 here is the intercept and beta 1 is the coefficient for rate of return on uh, equity. So if rate of equity is 0, beta 0 will show us what will be the salary or compensation of uh, a particular CEO and beta 1 will show us the change in the annual salary of uh, an average CEO when rate of equity increases by one percentage point. And we expect beta 1 to be positive because we believe that as the performance of a firm increases, so does the salary of uh, its uh, CEO. So we expect this beta 1 parameter to be a positive number. So we can take the derivative of this equation and we can get uh, the change in salary because of change in a uh, rate of equity and we'll get beta 1 parameter. So using this equation we can predict salaries of different CEO. Remember after running the regression we'll have uh, these beta parameters. We'll have a value of beta 0 parameter and a value of beta 1 parameter. After we have those we can plug in different values of return on equity in this equation to get the predicted salaries. So here we have data of uh, 209 CEOs and we are interested in knowing this relationship. The first thing to do is I'm gonna download this data from the Woolrich package. I'm gonna save it as my data. I'm gonna attach this data. There are 209 observations in this data set and our two variables of interest are this variable salary and return on equity, this variable. And the next thing you have to think about is you have to know the unit of measurement of both of these variables. For example, salary here is represented in thousands of dollars. So the salary of the first CEO is more than $1 million. And this return on equity, it is represented in percentage. So the return on equity here is 14.1%. So pay attention on these uh, units of measurements. These units are going to play a huge role when we will be interpreting these results. And remember, interpretation is the major part in this course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define these variables. I'm going to call my dependent variable salary as y. I'm going to save it as a column. This variable is saved in a different column now. And return on equity, I'm going to save it as my x variable. So you can look at this x variable here. And there are 209 observations for this variable as well. It's always a good idea to look at the summary statistics for both of these variables uh, to know what is the average, what's the minimum value, what's the max. For example, return on equity is got to be between 0 and 100. If you see an observation which is more than 100 or a negative observation here which is less than 0, you have to go to your data and see what is happening. So it's always a good idea to look at these numbers. Next, we're going to explore the correlation between these two variables. And it seems like the correlation coefficient is about 0.11. It's weak, but still there is some positive correlation between these two variables. Next, I'm going to use this plot command and I'm going to pass uh, these uh, two columns as uh, arguments in this function and uh, I'm going to write down 
my name of my data here i'm going to plot it and here i will get another view of uh, this data set as we can see there are some outliers here ceos with the return on equity less than 30 but huge salaries so we have to pay attention on uh, on these outliers as well okay next step i'm gonna regress y variable salary on uh, the return on equity so the command i'm going to use is called lm because it's a linear model so i'm going to use linear model command or linear model function and uh, y and i'm going to regress it on this tilde means i'm going to regress it on this x variable and we have already defined uh, x as the return on equity so we're going to regress this and save the result as uh, ols so now my results are saved next what i'm going to do is i'm going to run the summary command and what the summary command will do it's gonna i'll give the whole output using uh, ordinary least squares principle that i described in the previous class here we have uh, some output the most important thing for now is look at these two numbers the value of intercept is 963.19 this is our beta zero parameter and beta one parameter it's 18.5 so after we estimate this we have uh, uh, this equation the interpretation is if the return on equity is zero the salary of that ceo will be nine hundred sixty three thousand dollars one hundred and ninety one dollars because the salary is measured in uh, thousands of dollars so what is the interpretation of uh, this beta one parameter it shows that if return on equity increases by one unit which is one percentage point, then the salary increases by $18,500. So that's how we interpret this equation. Okay, so using this equation, we can also predict the salaries of uh, different CEOs with different uh, return on equity levels. For example, if the return on equity is 30 or 30%, 30 we can predict that the salary of a CEO of that firm will be about 1.5 million dollars in the future i'm going to show you how to predict these values and then get uh, the standard errors so that's how you estimate an equation in r using these r commands and estimate these beta parameters in this next example we are interested in exploring the relationship between wage level and education of a person we can represent this relationship using this regression model or regression equation where wage is a function of education and here we are again working with a simple linear regression model y or wage it is explained by this uh, explanatory variable education so essentially this is the relationship uh, that we wanted to explore we are interested in these uh, uh, beta parameters beta zero which is the intercept and beta one parameter which is the slope parameter for education this beta zero parameter will show us if the education of a person is zero, the wage of that person will be beta zero. And this beta one parameter will show us when the education level increases by one unit, the wage increased by beta one. So let's explore this relationship in R. We have this data wage one data in Woolrich package that I'm going to use. So I'm going to extract this data from the Woolrich package. As you can see, I have this data here. As usual, we are going to look at this data before doing anything. The first thing to notice here is that there are 526 observations in this data set. We have to pay attention on the unit of measurement here. Wage is represented in terms of hourly wage. For example, the wage of this first person is $3.10 and the education level of this person is 11 years. This education variable shows the education level of a person in years. I'm going to attach this data set and, and then I'm going to bind these variables. So again, I'm going to create two columns. And as usual, you can uh, look at these variables by clicking on any of these uh, variables. You can have a summary of these variables and the education level in the data is from 0 to 18 years. And the wage level is from 53 cents up to about $25. So we have these data set. Look at the plot of the data to know more about this data as we can see as the education level uh, is increasing so does uh, the hourly wages 
So we have a kind of idea, although there is a huge variation among uh, these variables. Some individuals, even with uh, very high education, they are making less than $5 an hour. Here we are interested in uh, the average relationship between education and the wage level. As usual, we're going to run this regression line and save it as OLS. We can call it OLS of wage and uh, the function is LM, linear model. And this Y is our dependent variable and we are regressing this variable on X variable, which is our explanatory variable here. And this tilde means we are regressing Y on X. So we're going to save this variable and then we are going to get the summary statistics and uh, again get beta parameters. So these are the two beta parameters. The intercept is minus 90 and the slope of the education variable is 0 0.54. So what are these uh, beta coefficient representing? So the first one is if the education level of an individual is zero, that particular individual will be making an hourly wage of uh, 90 cents in negative terms. So that person will be losing 90 cents uh, per hour. Obviously, uh, this doesn't make any sense in this case. So that's why we are mostly not interested in interpreting this uh, beta coefficient. Because in most of the cases, uh, this uh, beta zero parameter, it doesn't make any sense. However, we are more interested in knowing about the effect of education on uh, the wages. So if education of a person increases by one unit or one year in this case, the wage will increase by 54 cents. Again, we have to make sure that we are using the correct unit of measurement for interpretation of uh, these beta zero and beta one parameters. Education here, again, it is represented on uh, yearly. So we know it's got to be one unit, which is one year. And then wage is represented in uh, dollars and 0 0.54 means it's 54 cents. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.